Well, welcome to the undisclosed location. This is going to be my studio. This is where it's going to be happening for um, for as long as I can, really. Um, we've got the French cleat shelf on here. I want to show you what it's what I'm doing here. So this is called the undisclosed location. We have a bit of fun with it. We've got the French cleat shelf, which Ryan's been out me with, and we've only just started. You have a look down here. I'm going to have a shelf underneath here. Uh, be able to put some stuff. I'm not quite sure with these French cleat shelves. Ryan, help me out with this. Is that it's about making individual boxes to fit. Yeah, well, it's just custom, isn't it? It's custom made for, yeah. for for whatever you want, really. Yeah, so basically, I'm spinning around this side because I don't see my ball patch. <laughs> no, seriously, this is, um, these come off today, they lift off, and uh, yeah. if you want your radio, just come and take your radio, your little sander, and over here I've got all the chargers in here, there's a few more chargers, and yes, it is a bit of a Makita. I'm not being a Makita buff, it just so happens that I just, well, I was out in the bag, I don't know, just... It's always been a good price and, you know, and good brand, aren't they, you know? Um, yeah, good tool. Yeah, you you have a lot of feedback about tools and, and I know some tools are a little bit better than others, but anyway, that doesn't matter. The reason we're in here tonight is I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. We got the, can we just have a quick look at the, the yeah. shelf on this, this side? So basically, as far as I'm, as long as I'm going, I'm a bit like your guarantee. Guarantees are only good as the paper they're written on and as long as I'm alive, we're going to be giving uh, a product away off the Vaunt shelf at some point. And we have in the past, it's all packed, stuff's going out. This is going to be the podcast and wall. We've got the whiteboard on there at the moment. You can see where we've burnt the board and we've given it a retro look, almost like those like floorboards in, a, in an old house that where they've painted it yeah. the floor or one of those old doors. Distressed or yeah, something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. The chair's got to go, um, but we're going to have a tool, a mobile tool uh, a system. So we're able to move around. We're going to have a, a nice piece of wood on the top. And we're going to be talking about all things about landscaping. And of course, we've got to talk about it, is mental health. You know, it's so important uh, to try and help people and push them in the right direction. Let them know that they're, they're not alone at all times. So over in this corner here, without any further ado, we're going to have the Ruby Tool Shelf. This is Ruby Tools. Have a little look at that, right? Just to recognise the brand. People can familiarise themselves with the brand there. So the Ruby Tools, there we are. We've got the, the Pro Edge Cutter over here. Um, no, we'll have to try that out soon, don't we? Yeah, this is basically the Pro Edge cutter. Is uh, what it will do. It'll put a chamfer or like a forty-five on a, a tile or, or a porcelain unit when you're clad into a wall. And you put one on the other side, and you've got that forty-five. It'll come together, and it's nice and neat. And um, it's so important. I can't wait to start using this because uh, I talked to some of the guys at Ruby. What they always say is take the, a little bit off first with a grinder and then finish off with this just to save your blade just to save your blade it seems a bit daft i suppose in some respects but to save your blade like you know if, if you if you're doing a fair bit of it like and you've got a, a small angle grinder just take some off first take the corner piece off and then we, you'll be able to put the pro cutter on the edge put out a 45 then your 45 on the other piece and it will come together nice and it'll have a nice neat fit and what happens it doesn't go right to the corner it just leaves a little bit on so because what will happen if you go straight off at a 45 right you'll have all those broken edges as well yeah. so just keep a little bit in um, but we, we're going to be doing that so the ruby shelf's going to go over here on here and here two ruby shelves and then hopefully what's going to happen we've had a bit of problem with bt at the moment and open reach this is where we're going to have the big screen on here and uh, we'll be able to show you things that's going on in the background so there's a lot going to happen studios and workshops don't necessarily need to be that big to sort of talk about uh product tools, uh, knowledge and whatever, and what we're sharing. And of course, we've got to do something with the ceiling. That's going to happen soon. But what I want to talk to you about tonight, let's move Ryan's shavings out of the way. Right, can I just show very quickly, um, we've been <laughs> using your, 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 where is it? Your plane. It's just over there. I can't see it. It's by your saw. All right, okay, okay, okay. So, right, I'll show our viewers this and you can explain what it is. Have a quick look at that. I'm going to hold it nice and tight. Hold on, let me, let me back off. Me sorry, sorry, there you're we are. You're all right. There you are. This is a Stanley, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a low angle jack plane, yeah. Yeah. I like to do a lot of like fine woodworking and things. And then um, I suppose that, that it's Stanley, but it's not like a Lionel Nelson or anything. So it's a decent price, but it's not hundreds what? and hundreds. Yeah, you did tell me. Just tell our viewers what this was, this one here. I did. I think when I got it, it was around 150, 160. Well, to be fair, I say I got it. Uh, my missus bought it for me, but um, it's nice, isn't it? It's a nice plane, and it's a, you know it's got decent enough um, reviews. Look at that. Yeah, it's, it's just absolutely. Yeah, and you keep it sharp, regular. 
Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, and that little piece in the front, this moves around as well, doesn't it? Yeah, so it can double up as like a scrub plane as well. A scrub plane? Oh, a scrub plane, yeah. So that's Ryan's plane, okay? Let me show you my plane from when I was a young lad. It's like a like a tray here, isn't it? So this is my plane. This is just a smoothing plane, isn't it? Like, you know? Yeah. So this was a Stanley. This come in, do you know what, Ryan? This come in in a box when I was 17, in a wooden box. I bought it from Littlewood's catalogue. All right, and I was paying, I think I was about hundred pound, I think I paid for it. Yeah. And I had a bit of everything in, in the box, like, you know, and I was doing an apprenticeship at the time as a chippy, but I got the sack. Anyway, there it is, Ryan's cleaned that up. So that, I'm 57 in February, in the end of February. So if you want to send me a birthday card, 20th of February, just to let you know, I'm giving it all away, the undisclosed location, my birthday, my name, my phone number. And money. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so. It's the only part I want. <laughs> yes, so, yeah, absolutely, so. So I've had this for 40 years nearly. Yeah. It's Long time, innit? Yeah, but that'll now. last a lifetime if it's looked after. Yeah, it's mad though. Anyway, I'm pleased with that. Anyway, let's put this down over here on one side. What I want to talk to you about tonight is that people ask me on a regular basis to, what sort of mix do I use when I'm when I'm using paving. And um, one of the, the most important uh, points that I always make is not to put too much water in your mix. It, it just doesn't do... It's just not good. Water is basically, it can be really detrimental to, to any mortar and even concrete. Water has only been put in concrete basically for ease of placement, okay? If you watch Grady, he's called the Practical Engineer, and he'll tell you a little bit about that. You need the moisture, you need the water to, to make the magic happen, to start setting off and making it go hard. But what you don't want is that when you put water in concrete, that's when you have to put rebar in it to keep it all together. If you put too much cement, it heats up and it starts cracking. Concrete is a forever curing. So as you know, in a lot of the videos that I've been doing, I use an MOT type one uh, if it's in the rear garden. Depending on the dig, you can never tell what the depth of a sub base should be because it'll depend on the dig. The dig being what you're digging out. If the ground is really soft and clay, you've got to keep going basically, right? You know, you can't go on and on and on, but you need to go to a decent depth. So I always put a minimum of four inches of compacted sub base. And in, in some situations when we're doing projects, normally on new developments is that some of the sub base they put in on those little patios, it's really good. There's nothing wrong with it. They seem to have copious amounts of MOTs, uh, or MOT and uh, type one on, on building sites. So... Um, normally we try and recycle it. It's so important if you can recycle, you can. You'll see on occasion uh, out there on social media where these guys will have the recycling machines and they're recycling the product down, right? The slabs, the bricks, every. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that at all. Yeah, they're brilliant. Them, yeah, them and machines. you'll have some people that have said in the past that you shouldn't be doing it, you should get good clean stone in, but generally it is clean, okay? If you keep it clean, no contaminants in there. No soil particles, all right? No inert product, because what's going to happen is it's just, uh, that's not good at all. So there's nothing wrong with recycling, as long as it, it's clean. So I always talk about MOT, and I always talk about putting a lean mix on, and then I use my bedding mortar. I always use like a, a semi-dry a semi -dry screed. So what you want to be doing, when you squeeze it together, you form a ball, and that ball will tell you if, if it's holding together, there's enough moisture in there. And... Um, is it for me to say, in my opinion, I, I think when you're using a mixer, sometimes if you can't mix in a screed mix, okay, in a mixer because you get a thing called segregation where the, the cement will separate from the, the sharp sand that you're actually using and it segregates. It's basically a, a ball of cement, okay? So there's nothing in it. It doesn't mix correctly for using the screed mix. Now, some people think I'm going to say, well, you, you should be using a forced action mixer uh, and... Um, well, you can do, but they're really expensive. But there's no better way than doing a screen mix. And we've proved it, Ryan, where we tip a wheelbarrow on the floor. It's nice and moist. It's come out the bag. It's been sat in a builder's merchant's on the concrete. There's plenty of moisture in there. In some, in some cases, you want the moisture to come out. By putting it on the MOT type one or your lean mix, the water starts coming down because gravity just sends it down. And then you can start mixing that. You don't want to be using a wet product and, and using mixers sometimes. I know I've used them in the past. And uh, there's, it's always borderline between getting um, a good mix, okay? Because it, if you get to that screen mix, it just it just doesn't bind together. So I just use the shovel when I'm mixing up now, uh, and I have for many years, and I've done it in the past. And I call it the magic mix, and it's 
five sharp, one cement, basically. It's as simple as that. And then you can put the fiber uh, particles in it. I've seen in a video in America the other night, they're putting the particles in tarmac now. Oh, really? Yeah. In tarmac, yeah. And they was explaining about the added strength by putting these particles in. I'm not quite sure exactly what sort of, what they were made of, but they weren't mounting. And the young lady there, she pulled the tarmac out on a, on a shovel and you could see all the binder that was holding it together. So for me, good MOT type, type one, then your lean mix, that before you put your bedding water on, and you'll see it in, in the last couple of videos, we put a slurry, okay, between the bedding mortar and the lean mix. And the reason for that is that each level should bind to the level before. So when you put your lean mix on, which is, I do it roughly about 15 to one, we put the slurry on now, and I've been doing this a lot more than what I've been doing it. Put a slurry on as you're laying and working back. You don't want to be walking in it. When your bedding mortar goes onto that slurry, on the top of your lean mix, right, your bedding water is going to stick to that. So it's all binding all the way up, okay? Then you slurry your slab and then you lay your slab on your bedding water. I've seen in some cases companies screed in and then they pour a, a slurry on top of the screed. This is going probably a bit excessive. I don't know. It's, it's how you see it. And then they slurry the back. But it's about belt and braces, I think. Slurrying the, the lean mix putting your bedding mortar on, slurrying the back of your slab and bedding on, I, I think that's absolutely fine. But let me just show you, this is what I wanted to show you. So let's put the sandpaper over to one side over there. Um, this is a, a unit that I put together. This is a porcelain product, okay? And just to explain to you, there is a mark on the top because I've been uh, testing um, stains uh, like to try and get the grout out and see how it work with different cleaners and cleaning agents to remove the porcelain haze in some case and some of the, the grout systems. And I've literally put it on really heavy to see if it would move. I've got the compact, got the compactor plate, got the um, pressure washer on there to wash it off. And in some cases it worked, in some cases it, it didn't. Yeah, granted now you'll see the, the, the grout lines. If you come close, right, yeah. I've just cut it up quickly. And basically I've bedded, I've cut the 600 by 600 up into nine equal units, more or less equal. And then what I've done, I've bedded it onto another porcelain sla slab. You have to believe me now, there's no way I'm going to pick that up now because that's really heavy. That's almost like holding, holding four porcelain products and porcelain is very dense. So it's quite heavy. Roy and I had to lift that out and get this on here. We're not going to leave it like this tonight because I don't want the dogs coming in and that falling onto them. It's not good at all. So I've got a porcelain product underneath porcelain slab the porcelain slab represents the lean mix i suppose okay are you with me with that right yeah definitely yeah so just make sure i get it right so the porcelain slab represents the lean mix okay which is about 15 to 1 a lean mix uh the only thing i would say when people ask me what's the benefits of, of a lean mix type that in on google right type in on the top on google the benefits of a lean mix okay okay um are you going to do it now? If I can. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not going to try and read them off because there's so many many benefits for the benefits of, of a lean mix. And uh, so we've got a porcelain slab here, which represents the lean mix. And then what we've got is basically, I think there's roughly, I don't know if we've got, oh, we have got a tape here. Stay there, right now. I'm just going to get a tape measure. Here we are. So the bedding mortar I've got there between the slab the porcelain slab on the top and the top of the of the porcelain product is let's just say 30 mil it's just under 30 mil so that bedding mortar is 30 mil thick okay and that's done with five sharp one cement and um but what we've done is on top of the porcelain slab we have there which represents the the base the sub base the lean mix i've actually slurried that and then I've put the bedding mortar on top of that and I've screeded it. And then what I've done, I've slurried the backs of these units and I've tapped them down like laying slabs. And I'll tell you now, this is two and a half years old now. Two and a half years old. And you can see it's damp. It's just been brought in, okay? It's been out in the rain and everything. Let me just see if I've got, um, just use this here now. Um, what I'm going to do tomorrow, I'm going to be sharing this and I'll probably share it on, on YouTube. I'll do a post on, on the community. So hopefully you'll see it. If you <laughs> see, 
See, right, look, this is what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, it's solid, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. All right. <laughs> look at that. It's absolutely solid. And the thing is, what you've got to try and remember is when you're using a screen mix, is you're not putting so much water in there. And when you don't put so much water in there, because what happens with the water, when the water is in, the, in, in, your, in your bedding water, it basically, it hydrates, it goes. It's no good at all. And your concrete, your, your bedding water or your concrete will expand because of the water. The shrinkage, cement can curl one way and curl another way because of the dry, how it dries. And then what happens in most cases, certainly you'll see it with sandstone because the sandstone is so thin now. It's not like it used to be. Whereas before you could, you could lay it on, on a sharp sand bed and it was like two inches thick, 50 mil thick. It was a heavy unit, probably as heavy as this. You know that it wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna move. And what we were always taught years ago, that when you're laying your slabs, the mortar in between should always be softer than the product that you're actually using, okay? And you'll find that all these grouting systems, there's always a flexibility about the grouting systems. Um, lots of things to be said on this. I could talk about this topic over and over again, and, and we'll revisit. If you've got any questions, you need to sort of just drop us an email or just I, to, to, for once, for once, just put the questions in here. Don't drop me any emails. Let's read the questions in one place. It's so hard for me at, this, at the moment when we've got a lot of work coming in now. It's if springtime is coming. The season's kicking off again. It's all those messages coming back and I can't. It's, they're everywhere. OK, and Alison likes me to stay off the emails and make sure that I actually stay with it, um, with the YouTube stuff. Just comment on there. And uh, don't forget, my, oh, I should have said this at the start of the video. Please, please subscribe. We're heading towards 30,000 this year, and that's where we want to be at the end of the year. 30,000. If we can get to 25,000 by the end of spring, I'd be absolutely over the moon if we can do that. So hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Try and give back to the channel by supporting us by hitting the uh, by subscribing and hitting the notification button. Um, so when you look at this, this is why I call the magic mix because it actually does work. Right? Can you come a little bit closer, mate? I want to show. So this is two and a half years old now. It's been sat out there. Let me have a look. See if I can. You can see on there how solid that is, okay? It's solid, absolutely solid. You can actually just see the slab underneath there. If you get, can you see that nice and right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see the slab underneath there, which represents the, the, the base. Then you've got 25 mil of a sharp sand. That's absolutely solid. That's not going anywhere at all. And none of this is actually de delaminated uh, whatsoever. And I call that the magic mix. And the reason it's, it's, it's magic, because it, it doesn't fail. It's not going to fail any time. You'll see, you'll see contractors on a regular basis saying, well, I've never had to go back because you've never probably gone back, some of you, and, and had a look, to be honest. How often do we go back to have a look at the jobs? The only time when we go back to have a look at a job, if we want to see a picture of it when it's been planted up by the customer, unless you planted it yourself, you want to go back later on, or you've made friends with your customers, and it does happen on, on some occasions, and you go back and have a look, and they, they will say to you, invariably say, hey, I've got a loose slab. But the thin slabs these days, the, the sandstone's so thin it delaminates, we need to create a bridge bond between the wearing course, the slab that you're laying, onto the mortar, but you need a bridge bond between the mortar and the, the lean mix. Um, I'm going to do a post tomorrow. Ryan and I are going to, are we going to cut it right down here with, with the nine inch cutter, aren't we? Yeah. And yeah, and it's, it's going to be a blade for, for cutting sandstone uh, because we haven't got one for the nine inch grinder uh, for porcelain. So but we're going to cut straight through here. So you'll be able to see the inside of that tomorrow. And you've got to remember it is a compacted a compacted bed has so much value. Um, you'll see in the past I've mentioned about Earth Ram Walls. You need to check it out. I've got a Facebook page. It's called Earth Ram Walls uh, UK. Get on there and, and actually have a look. Earth Ram Walls have been been happening for. I never invented it. It's been been around for millennia. And um, you know the, the Great Wall of China was an Earth Ram Wall. And the reason it's got strength, the Colosseum, the Alhambra um, in Spain has, and the Colosseum in Rome is parts of it is built with Earth Ram Walls where they rammed the product. And even now, if you look and check it out, Earth Round Wars, go on YouTube. There are copious amounts of water, uh, water, copious amounts of people actually building houses and buildings with Earth Round Wars. And the reason it works is the compaction. And that's what we have here. It's the compacted bed, which actually gives it its strength and its integrity, which is going to give you longevity. Um, 
it's an interesting topic and it's so important. It's so important to me because you want to make sure that when you put your paving down, the paving should be around like the Roman paving. It's as simple as that. So, right, any questions before we go? Not for me, no. Yeah, can we just remind you, if you're looking at a lean mix, L-E-A-N-M-I-X, L-E-A-N-M-I-X, lean mix or a dry lean. Look, just type the words in, benefits of using a lean mix. Don't let me just tell you, just go on there on Google and have a look and there'll be not necessarily forums, there'll be civil engineering specifications that will actually start talking about that. There's loads more to say on this subject, but if you're thinking about having a patio installed, okay, just check out before you choose your contractor, and then maybe it'll be beneficial to actually, when you speak to your contractor, um, and just ask them if they're aware of it. Uh, it's so important. And so there you are, that's it. I haven't got nothing more to say. We've had a long day today. We've grouted a patio using the Easy Great product and uh, it's looking good. And we were, it was it missed today, wasn't it? Oh yeah. It was really it missed today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so a big shout out for Cameron there down in, in Pembroke and Anthony Jones and Catherine Trigg and James uh, where we're working at the moment. So all the best to you guys. Uh, we'll be seeing you in the morning. But what we've got to remember, think about what you're doing. Try and be a bit more thorough when you're choosing your contractor. You don't want to be spending a lot of amounts of money on a project and then it delaminates, okay? Just try and tick the boxes and it's all about belt and braces. That's it for me. It's John Roberts, Green Top Landscape from the Undisclosed Location once again. We'll be doing a little bit more from here and uh, we're going to give you an update of the, the, the two planes, aren't we? Yeah, yeah once, yeah, once we've got them cleaned up, yeah. Definitely. That's it. Oh, and uh, if you are on Instagram, Instagram, check out Morn... Go on, Ryan. Landscapes say. and Design. Morn Landscapes and Design. Just check out uh, Ryan's uh, profile on there. It's, it's, it's at Morn Landscapes and yeah, Design. Yeah, M-O-U-R-N-E. And how's it going? Yeah, good. I mean, I really need to be a bit more hot on with the old Instagram because I've only got like one or two posts, but mm. I'm not really a social media guy like you, but... Yeah, it's but, definitely you know, something I've got to get on with. Yeah, it's so important, it, and you know, and believe you me, right? I I put my phone down at night time. That I'll, I'll load this video up now tonight, but my phone will go down. But social media is so important for so many ways. It offers a lot of support. It can be a benefit. It can be a good thing. Uh, social media. So there we are. That's it. All the best. Take care. Be safe wherever you are and wherever you're going. But just keep to the left. See you soon.